Ishan with First Updates Now, and we're here with Team Quantum Leap from Mason, Ohio. We got Shankar and Ishan. They're going to talk to us a little bit about the rebuilt robot for this MTI competition. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. AFTC fans, are you ready for Freight Frenzy? Join us after kickoff live all weekend, September 18th and 19th, as we'll be out at Kettering University for the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. You'll get detailed breakdowns of game elements, the field, and prototyping and testing of robot components and assemblies. Watch live, view short videos after, and ask questions for the Kettering team at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Can you talk to us a little bit about your intake? You changed it up a bit since your last time. What, what went into these changes? How did you make it work? Yeah, so the biggest thought process was for states mostly. So we wanted a consistent vertical intake. So that's kind of where the shift from just uh, normal compliant wheels to the whole noodles came with. Uh, we also have a few sticks on here. So if the ring gets stuck on the axle, it doesn't go below it. It just hits it and falls. That's kind of uh, how our vertical intake works. And the noodles, they got some nice grip on them. Uh, they're pretty strong. So we just felt like that was the best option. And they got more range, they're more durable. Robots can hit them. We felt like that was the best decision and there. And you threw some zip ties in there. Is that like, is this just Home Depot noodle and then you put a zip tie for stiffness? Exactly, yeah. It's just a Home Depot noodle with stiff tie, zip tie and then we just got it clamp up together so it doesn't uh, fly off or anything. Awesome, that's a great tip for rookie teams that are watching this. So you get it into your intake. Now how does it get up into your robot? Yeah, so we have a belt system here. So we have uh, about 10 total axles. So uh, we got the bottom rollers, which we kind of just cut up a compliant wheel and just gorilla glued it on. Uh, from there, it just goes through our transfer, which is kind of a loop. And then we have our flap here at the top to bring our intake down. The cool part about our robot is not only can we intake in the forward motion with our turret, but it can also turn, which uh, hit B, which it can also turn while intaking uh, because the, the circle is actually in the center of the axle for the turret. So what that allows us is the bucket and the top half of the circle it doesn't ever rotate. So it's in the same position in respect to the intake the entire time. Awesome. So, so you can be shooting while you're, while you're picking up rings. That's exactly. That's a great tip for, for teams that are doing that. And now talk a little bit about your shooter. You got it on a turret. You exactly. talk about how you got the turret working, how you got it tuned. This little flap up here, I'm assuming, exactly. is where we're aiming. Exactly. Talk about your flywheel. Yeah, so our flywheel, uh, pretty standard. We just got the uh, GoBuilder 6000 RPM motor. Uh, we put a gear on recently for inertia. We just saw that it would be better to have that for in-person competition. Uh, and so far, we've seen pretty good results with it. Um, the reason we decided that we only needed one flywheel, we kind of use these uh, compressions because they give us a lot more torque because we're not using two motors, so we kind of need uh, less torque, so we can't really go with the stiffer wheels. Um, our flap here, we kind of use a regression, so we kind of just park in different places on the field, change the thing manually, and then get a linear regression, well, not a linear regression, but a quadratic equation going. And we kind of just use that, and we plug into the code, and we use our four-wheel odometry, actually, to track where we are on the field to figure out how to shoot, where to shoot, so on and so forth. And our turret, I mean, it's a pretty uh, simple mechanism. It's just got one motor down here. Uh, we geared at five to one because we saw some wiggle with it. And the slower motor speeds also perform a lot better with our PID because it's such subtle movements. Right. And you also want a lot of torque because when the flywheel is running, the thing can move very, very easily. Awesome. Uh, so you talked about your four-wheel odometry. Could you, could you put the robot on its back and show us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So uh, one of the biggest things that we kind of uh, kind of discovered, well, not really discovered, I'd say, but explored this season is our four-wheel odometry. So this consists of two x-axis wheels and two y-axis wheels. That's how far I'm going to get you. Uh, our programmer, Ishan, can uh, explain to you the rest. Yeah, so we actually saw with our three-wheel odometry design that we, there was a lot of jitter in the vertical wheels due to the dynamics of the omni wheel. So knowing this, we added an extra wheel so we can get two different heading estimates. And then depending on the direction that the robot is turning, we would use two different sets of wheels to calculate the heading. So this actually works really well and has less than a degree of drift over um, the entire teleop period. And that helps us auto align to the high goal and also helps us in auto a lot to use the peer pursuit algorithm. Um, and with the peer pursuit algorithm, we also had some extra time left in auto. And so we decided to utilize this time 
to do to pick up the rings that bounce back from the power shots and intake them and then shoot them. So uh, with the bounce back, we use this camera, this Logitech C920, and uh, we use a camera lo uh, a ring localization algorithm using OpenCV to then find the position of the ring and then just plug in those points into Pure Pursuit, and that will dynamically generate a path for the robot to follow. So you're doing that on the fly. The robot's calculating it yeah. as it goes in autonomous. Yeah. Awesome. So one of the other things I noticed, you got two wobble goal mechanisms. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Chunker? Yeah, so uh, before the competition, we saw we only had six servos with one. So we were like, you know what? Why do we have to keep switching it for blue and red? So we decided, you know what? Let's just throw the other one on there. Uh, when we're red, we usually just tape up the blue wobble goal. And when we're blue, we tape up the red wobble goal. It's really just there for auto convenience and just because we had the extra servos. Awesome. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is this little camera right here. I saw this on there, and I immediately recognized it. Do you want to talk a little bit more about what it is, why you used it? Um, I've seen some forum posts on it, so yeah. go ahead and explain. So yeah, we, we wanted some more accuracy coming from our odometry, um, even more than what we already had with four wheel. So we decided to use a T265 um, to calm and filter that with the odometry. And we thought that this would help in, sense, in cases of uh, lots of defense where the odo could go off from the robot jumping around. Um, but we actually found that this is not very good at high speeds, uh, especially the speeds that our robot is going at. So we decided to uh, unplug it and try uh, just the four-wheel odometry. And it was working fine even with defense, just because of how heavy our robot is. Awesome. Really awesome robot here. Excited to see it play a little bit more here tonight at the MTI. And best of luck. Hopefully you make it to the finals. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.